It is one of the juiciest anecdotes to emerge from all the great reporting on Trump and Russia. In 2006, Donald Trump Jr. and Ivanka Trump got to go to Moscow. An advisor to their father, who has Russian connections, gets them a private tour of the Kremlin. And Ivanka gets a special perk. She gets to go behind Vladimir Putin's desk in the Kremlin and sit in Putin's private chair. The best part, when the New York Times asked Ivanka Trump whether the story was true, she said, quote, it's possible she sat in Putin's chair during that tour, but she just did not recall it. I mean, who could remember? Maybe I sat in Vladimir Putin's chair in the Kremlin that one time. Who can say? Anyway, the guy who claims to have arranged that tour and encounter with Putin's chair is Felix Sater. Born in Russia, grew up in Brooklyn with Trump attorney Michael Cohen, convicted of financial fraud, but avoided prison time by becoming an FBI informant. And he wound up as a senior advisor to Donald Trump at the Trump Organization. Felix Sater is now best known for working with Michael Cohen to broker the Trump Tower Moscow deal, which Donald Trump was secretly pursuing during the 2016 presidential campaign, even as Russia was attacking our election. Felix Sater is set to give public testimony next week before the House Intelligence Committee, which will mean that the two primary players in the Trump Tower Moscow deal, Michael Cohen and Felix Sater, will have given testimony under oath to Congress. And today, less than a week before Sater's testimony, WNYC and ProPublica have unearthed new information about the developer who was supposed to build Trump Tower Moscow. In the latest edition of their Trump Inc. podcast, WNYC and ProPublica go through this letter, first obtained by BuzzFeed News, in which the Russian developer that Felix Sater recruited to build Trump Tower Moscow pitched himself to Michael Cohen. Cohen has testified that he was keeping his boss, Donald Trump, apprised of all these developments. In this letter, the developer, Andre Rosov, describes his qualifications. His current projects, a suburban development outside Moscow, a giant mall in Wilston, North Dakota, and an office building in New York City. Maybe not the resume of someone prepared to build a giant Moscow skyscraper, but okay. But what today's Trump Inc. podcast discovered is that even those accomplishments were oversold. The suburban development in Russia has never been completed. The mall in North Dakota was never built, though they did create this nice artistic imagining of it. And the building in New York City? Well, here's what happened when two ProPublica reporters went to that building. They asked to talk with the super, David, who's been there since the early 90s. Yeah. Oh, hi. Nice to meet you. Hands are cold. <laughs> Property records show that Rosov owned this building for just over a year, bought it all cash, took out some financing on it, and sold it for a 23% profit. David says during that year, they didn't make any major improvements on the building and that he never met Rosov. You're smiling. <laughs> but he did meet another Russian speaker connected with the deal. This gentleman has a very colored history. Um, Felix Sater. Yeah, 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 yeah. Felix Sater. His name shows up on the sale documents as an authorized signatory. So the one actual building this developer appears to have actually owned, he owned for a year, and Felix Sater was the only guy who ever went there or signed any paperwork? And that's what the developer is holding out as a qualification to build Trump Tower Moscow, billed as the tallest building in Europe, because of course, apparently that was good enough for Donald Trump, though. He signed a letter of intent for the developer, Mr. Rosoff, to do just that. He signed it on the day of the third Republican presidential primary debate, a primary he, of course, went on to win while saying nice things about Vladimir Putin and never revealing his Moscow project. The more you know. Joining us now is... Andrea Bernstein, co-host of WNYC and ProPublica's Trump Inc. podcast. Thank you so much for being Thanks here tonight. Thanks for having Andrea. me. Great to be here. Okay, so there's a letter of intent um, signed by Donald Trump and Andre Rosoff to build this Trump Tower of Moscow. There's an architectural rendering of it. Was there any other qualification that this gentleman had to actually build the largest tower in Europe? Well, this is the strange thing, is that there are people who were actually real developers in, in Moscow. One of them, one of their names has come up in connection with the Trump Tower meeting much later on, Aras Agalarov was an actual developer in Moscow. Right. So what it is really confusing is we know Trump was in touch with a real developer. This developer seems to be a second tier developer. He didn't bring projects to fruition. The whole deal, the more that we looked at it, the pieces did not add up. 
And what is so strange is that all of the parties seemed really bent on getting this thing built. We know now that Michael Cohen did indeed call the Kremlin, did ask for a favor, and this was while the Kremlin was planning its attack on the U.S. election. So, I mean, this is kind of business as usual for Donald Trump mm -hmm. since he started in real estate in New York. Decades ago, he has been cultivating high-level government officials. That's been something he's tried to monetize. But when you go to Moscow, when you're trying to build a building with a second-tier developer, and you're literally asking for help from the president of Russia's office, the question has to be raised, why? What are you trying to do here? How do you think you're going to make this money? And why are you keeping all this secret? For years, Trump kept this secret yeah. from the American people. So we got some answers, but we also got a lot more questions. Well, I mean, and the, the key question I think that you asked is, if you are trying to do this ambitious project that is secret, you're not, you're, you know, it's so important that you don't, you don't feel like you can even disclose it, but you pick somebody who is not an experienced developer and who in theory couldn't even do it. Do you have, did you find just in what you were looking at, was it a real project? Because if it was real, you would think they would go to people like the Well, Adelaros. one of the things that we have asked ourselves over and over again is that Trump often works with inexperienced developers. Okay. Over the years, he has done this. And sometimes the projects get built, and sometimes they don't, and there are delays, and there are lawsuits. But the way that Trumps structure these deals is that they are able to make money. Right. And this deal was particularly front-loaded if you read the licensing agreement, in terms of the amount of money that Trump would get up front. It was one of the most lucrative upfront deals. So there's a possibility that there was just an intent to get money up front. We don't know. But one of the things that is so confusing is there seemed to be not a site, and they seem to be asking the Kremlin for perhaps permission to get a nice coveted location. Right. So there you have it, the, the question of, why were they seeking a favor from the Kremlin, from a hostile foreign power, at a time when nobody else was really investing in Russia, or few people were because of the U.S. sanctions? So yeah. the more you look at this deal, the stranger it seems. It wasn't just, yeah, it was going to put up a tower like Trump Tower in New York. It was a sort of strange, confusing deal with a lot of business partners that have a lot of questions around them. And, and Donald Trump has built with Felix Sater before. So is, 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 is this similar to the deals he's done with so him? So they worked on the Trump Soho, right. uh, which is here in Manhattan, and we have done a lot of reporting on it. And that building did go up, but it went bankrupt during the course of the marketing or after the marketing. Ivanka Trump and Donald Trump Jr. were investigated for felony fraud by the Manhattan DA. That case was never brought. And the building is now no longer the Trump Soho. It's called the, the Dominic Hotel. Nor, even though one of the things they were investigating for was claiming that it was 60% sold, nor right. was it ever more than 30% sold. So. Wow. There was a building, yeah. uh, but it had a lot of problems. And, and one of the things that's so interesting with Trump is that seems more typical than, say, Trump Tower New York, which is a sort of tall and, as it goes, relatively normal development project yeah. as these things go. It's the licensing money. That's what they seem to always be going for, Andre Bernstein, uh, co-host of WNYC and ProPublica's really great uh, Trump Inc. podcast. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Thank great you to be here. very much. And coming up, a native U.S. citizen, get this, battles with ICE. Details on the policy that almost got him deported. That's straight ahead. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.